Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm with Stu Miniman. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum. This is our second Dell Storage Forum. Last year we were down in Orlando. Really the second Dell Storage Forum where they brought together the Ecologic customer bases, the uh, compelling customer bases, and of course Dell's own very large install base. And we're here with Bob Fine, who's the Director of Product Marketing for the compellent side of Dell. Bob, welcome mm. to theCUBE. Great, thank you, glad to be here. It's great to see you again. Um, Always good. A lot of good um, mm. action going on at Dell Storage Forum. A lot of the messaging is thing, are things that we've heard in the past from Compellent, but they're refined, you know? I mean, fluid data architecture, right? That one comes to mind. Sure. How much of that is just sort of, hey, we got this great messaging, let's just bolt it onto Dell versus some kind of fundamental underpinning that is new? So um, the um, fluid data, <coughs> it's not just a message. We have, <coughs> we have, excuse me, <coughs> we have products that uh, meet that objective. We've been doing it for, um, <coughs> excuse me, quite a while. Um, for example, some of the technology that we have, our uh, data progression is one of those technologies. Um, it's been proven in the market, and it does help our customers put the data at the right place at the right time, at the right cost. Um, fluid data is uh, more than a marketing message. It, it's real, it's there, uh, customers use it today, and, um, and they use it not just to move data, to move it for the sake of moving, it's really all about lowering cost. When our customers move their data, um, they're moving it from costly storage to uh, lower cost, from a tier one to a tier three. The beauty of this fluid data architecture is that we can do that in the background without impacting performance. In fact, the opposite is true. In most cases, it improves performance because we can free up that expensive tier one resource by putting all that inactive data on tier three. So it costs go down, performance goes up. That, that's what fluid data is all about. And we do it without, without the user touching it. I remember the um, first time we ever had Phil Soren on theCUBE was at uh, VMworld 2010. Sure. And he was very simple. He said, look, we're just trying to basically bring features that were associated with you know, mainframe class storage down to the regular, everyday, small, medium-sized business. And that's really what Compellent did. Uh, you were the first, really, to do that. Um, and it, in, a, in an architecture that worked, solid, sure. people use it, they love it. Why did it take the rest of the industry, do you think, so long to to come up with sure. a similar concept? Um, a couple reasons. Um, the, the first and foremost, um, a lot of the other vendors had an architecture already in place, and it's, uh, it's really difficult when you've got an architecture that's been in place for a while to add that capability. So Compellent started new from the ground up, and what we did was we built into our code a little bit of extra intelligence. Um, basically we're using metadata, data about the data. And because we had a ground up architecture, we could build that intelligence into the platform at day one. So we didn't have to go back and try to figure out how to modify it, which would have been really hard. That's why when Compellent came out of the chute, we had this intelligence and we could do this right out of the gate and work for customers first time, every time. So now, so was, that a, was that a fundamental design criterion, that whole um, data progression? Um, or did it come out of the fact that you guys had some other features that allowed you to do that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, sure. sometimes, you know, think, think of like, uh, you know, uh, Waffle. Waffle enables some other capabilities sure. that are sort of ripple effect. Was it, did you guys set out to say, okay, we need to have this data compression, so let's design an architecture that can support that, or was it more of a, hey, we have this great, you know, virtualized system and we can do this? Um, first, just to clarify, it's data um, progression. I think you said compression. No, no, no I um, said progression. Okay, yeah. just, just checking. Yeah. Um, we recognized that we wanted to do a lot of different things that other customer, other vendors couldn't do. In order to do that, you needed more intelligence. So when we first started looking at what are those things we could do to add intelligence, um, we designed that architecture from the beginning and that enabled data progression. It also enabled us to do snapshots in a different way, also to replicate in a different way. So that extra intelligence gave us the ability to build on a, a whole set of additional features 
that came from that initial design. So, so Bob, uh, we talk about mm -hmm. that, that new architecture for tiering and we see even everyone follow on. The, the next wave appears to be Flash and you st started to see flash mm. permeating into some of the existing systems. You've also seen new architectures come out with all uh, flash arrays. So sure. I wonder if you can speak to uh, you know, where Del Del sees flash fitting into your existing architecture and is there a need for uh, an all flash architecture and would that be you know, an acquisition or a, a pivot on what you have today? So uh, it's an interesting question. Um, all flash I think is really an indicator that customers are looking for ways to optimize their system. Um, as far as customer demand in all flash, we haven't seen that much. Customers are asking. Uh, something more we hear from the press or analyst. Now, that being said, <coughs> the um, technology that we spoke of a few minutes ago, the data progression, it has the intelligence where we could do it. That being said, um, Dell has made an acquisition, RNA Networks, something that's uh, uh, publicly known, and RNA Networks does have some very sophisticated software and hardware to enable host caching, to put a uh, effectively a solid state drive in the server closer to where the data uh, originally came in. So we have that uh, now part of the uh, Dell technology umbrella and um, you will hear from Dell and Dell Storage ways to roll out some very, very intelligent ways to leverage host cache in the server, and uh, most likely you'll see that integrated with other technologies from Compellent. Um, what those are and how we'll do that, that's, that's, that's a future uh, topic. So, uh, t take us back, you know, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, where customers mm -hmm. saying, hey, we, sure. we want this ability to progress our data from you know, expensive disk now to, to less expensive disk? Were, sure. they were they telling you that? Absolutely, customers were, uh, were faced with uh, just increasing amount of storage. And they said, you know what? I bought all these drives, and um, the drives I, they had to buy were very expensive. 15K, tier one, um, pretty pretty pricey drives. And then after the uh, data would sit on those drives for a couple of weeks, 30 days, 60 days, they said, now wait a minute. I had to buy those drives to meet my initial requirement to bring the data in, but now that it sits there, I'm not using it anymore. Why do I have to keep paying those high speed costs as I expand my system to add more capacity, but I really don't need the performance. Compellent, there's got to be a better way to do it. And that's that was really the impetus for data progression. So you really were sort of uh, using a mental model of a classical tier one mainframe storage and saying, all right, let's bring this down to the masses. Now, Flash, does it change everything or does it just sort of fit right in. In other words, you're starting to see a lot of granularity in the flash arc. Sure. You, got, you know, extended you know, memory that's persistent. Sure. You got, you know, Stu mentioned all flash arrays. You got the stuff you guys did from RNA, which is this distributed coherent flash, sure. um, you know, down into the hybrid arrays. So your management system controls the array, right? Is there a higher level of abstraction that has to control that whole entire hierarchy? Um, interesting question. By using a solid state device or any other new type of drive, it fits the architecture that we have. So we can keep the metadata that we talked about before, and that applies to really any drive technology. We first started shipping solid state drives about two years ago, and uh, one of the ways that we could use them differently at Compellent, we could really divide up the volume and only keep individual blocks that needed to be on the uh, SSD, but the rest of the volume can sit on cheaper disk. So we made it cheaper from the start, and as SSDs evolve and flash evolves, it's all part of the existing compelling architecture. We don't see it as very different. It's a natural, uh, a natural evolution to our existing architecture. So Bob, you hear a lot of talk in the industry about unified storage. A lot of it comes from the vendor community. Um, are customers asking you for that, and you know, what's your play there? Um, customers are looking for unified storage. Um, there's no question. Customers want a uh, one platform for both block and file. Um, and uh, a while ago, just over a year ago, Dell purchased Exanet, which is a great file system. And that file system has been implemented on uh, the PowerVault lines. 
and it is available on the Equalogic line. And over time, you'll see that on the Compellent portfolio as well. Okay, so that's a real requirement. That's just not a absolutely, checkbox. Absolutely, absolutely. Customers want, um, want one system. Uh, yeah. One system to manage, or not manage, one, sy one platform for high performance. Right. And that could be a compellent today with Flash. Yeah, even you, you look at virtualization environments, there's yeah. lots of cases where you know th there's some pieces of my data that I want in file and others that I need on block. Sure. Um, speaking of virtualization, you know we, we, we've known compellent since before the acquisition. Pretty early on. Um, and we really saw an acceleration of how, in kind of a tightness of how uh, the compellent uh, stuff can work with VMware after the acquisition. Can, sure. you, can you speak a little bit to the VMware relationship on the compellent side? Sure, uh, a couple things. The first, uh, first part is that we are already virtualizing all the storage. So part of compellent's DNA, if you will, was really to virtualize. So all of the drives in a compellent architecture, they're all virtualized together. We virtualize other things such as the um, in our controller, the ports that come in from the server or the ports that go to the drives, all those ports are virtualized. Customers can change from iSCSI to fiber channel and they'll keep all their uh, logical definitions to the volume. So everything is virtualized. So because we already had that as part of our, part of our background, part of our um, DNA, our legacy, it was pretty intuitive to go into a virtualized operating system. So both for Microsoft and for VMware, uh, we've had a long-standing relationship as part of Compellent, <coughs> and now through, uh, through Dell, we've been able to extend that. Um, Dell, before Compellent, part of the Equalogic team, had a great relationship with VMware, and that's helped Compellent. Uh, so at Compellent, we've been supporting uh, VMware as a partner. Compellent has offered capabilities for SRM, Site Recovery Manager, and uh, we also have capabilities for the VAI interface as well. So we're uh, fully certified, uh, fully compatible, <coughs> and we have a great uh, relationship with uh, VMware as a company and the Alliance team. When, um, <coughs> when you came to Dell, uh, you guys obviously have a big channel presence, all channel. All, um, all channel yeah. all the time. Um, <coughs> which really wasn't Dell's DNA, although they certainly started that transformation. What did you, what did you teach Dell about the channel? What did you learn from, from Dell? Wow, <clears throat> um, great, great question. Um, Dell taught us a lot about scale, and um, I mean, at, at Compellent we had a great relationship with the channel. In fact, the original um, DSF, which is C drive, started out as a channel event. So we knew a lot there, and we knew, um, we knew how to manage a high touch relationship with the channel. Uh, deal registration, um, channel resources, um, a portal, a configurator. Not All screwing them. <laughs> <laughs> Compel never, but anyway. <clears throat> so it's happened. You know, <laughs> maybe by other vendors. Yeah, maybe absolutely. Vendors. You don't know have to talk yeah, about that channel head fake. It does I mean, happen. Yeah. Well, and, and what uh, some storage vendors would do, they would uh, tell the channel, you're my uh, favorite partner, and then if the deal got real big, or if it was at the end of the quarter. I'm my favorite partner. <laughs> it changed. <laughs> Suddenly the rules changed. <laughs> Whereas uh, Compellent, we never did that. And uh, so, so those are some of the things we learned as Compellent that we brought to Dell. Uh, but again, Dell really taught us about scale. An event of this size, um, we never could have done that as uh, Compellent. And to, um, to extend the reach that Dell has around the world, again, we never could have done that as Compellent. So it, it's, it's been great uh, bi-directionally. We've learned and they've learned from us. So Bob, you participated <coughs> in probably one of the greatest um, wealth creations within storage ever. Uh, when you look at um, Equalogic, Left Hand, Data Domain, 3PAR, <coughs> Compellent, Isilon, all massive acquisitions. Yes. And um, do you feel like, and, and all around, not all, but many around virtualization, certainly you guys and sure. some of the others. Um, do you feel that the Flash marketplace will will be as um, exciting? Or do you think that it's overhyped? Again, Dave, um, guys, great, great questions. So whether customers want an all flash array to today is really not the question. Uh, but what we've seen over the years in the disk drive industry where we've been part of for uh, many, many years as mm -hmm. our hair shows, yeah. <laughs> um, things change and things change 
really quite fast. Yeah, they sure do. So it used to be a, a, a big drive uh, 10, 15 years ago. Today is, is nothing. And uh, Flash has that potential. Um, but I think we'll always see a mix of Flash and rotating media. Flash is a uh, high performance, um, relatively low capacity as a tier one, tier zero. And then we'll see uh, rotating media for deep archives, high capacity, low cost. I think the two will always exist, but uh, absolutely we are in the dawn of something new now where Flash will have a bigger and bigger role over the next few years. Yeah, it, feel, it certainly feels that way. So absolutely. Give, given that, um, it, it, you know, our belief is that it's going to be more of a software intensive mm. um, requirement okay. from an innovation standpoint to okay. manage that you know, extending. So again, I'm, I'm asking, this is really, I'm asking really Bob Fine's opinion, not necessarily you know, representation of Dell, because sure. you, you've, you've seen a lot of changes in the storage business. Absolutely. Do you think that there's an opportunity for somebody to emerge as say like the Veritas of Flash? You know what I mean by that? So kind of a, somebody who manages that, that whole software stack uh, uh, and and you know brings a level of, of heterogeneity to the table, but rich function, you know, or will it be more of a sort of appliance centric, device centric model? Yeah, Dave, and if I can just add on that, you know, you talk about how much capacity is flash. This is changing. I mean, sure. I, I just got a note: a terabyte of SSD in a MacBook Pro now. Wow. So wow. you know, I, I've heard applications, mm. you know, Fusion I/O is putting VDI in the server, and you know, if I can have a terabyte, you know, my MacBook, I'm going to have that much, you know, my phone soon. So, so it, it, it's absolutely changing and changing quickly. Um, how fast and um, who wins is uh, to be determined. Um, I think we've got a better uh, economy right now in an economic environment that will foster um, startups and VCs. We went through that wave. Uh, you mentioned some of the uh, great innovators that were acquired. And um, we're looking forward to seeing the, the next wave of uh, innovators come to market. But um, you know th th that aside, from an end user standpoint, they don't want um, individual point products. They're still going to want a solution. And um, we'll, we'll just have to look at how that works together between point solutions and vendors like uh, Dell that can put all those pieces together. Um, looking forward to see how that rolls out over the next few years. What's happening in the, uh, the Minneapolis scene these days, the Minnesota scene, right? I mean, you guys, Phil used to always say, oh, it's, it's an, actually an advantage for us because we can get talent. There's you know a former CDC, IBM, you know there, DNA. You know what's what's happening. Give us an update on the region. So the uh, region is still uh, pretty hot, um, so to speak. Not not temperature yeah. wise. <laughs> this um, time of year well, <coughs> for 60 days. Well, yesterday was uh, warm, yeah. but that was about <laughs> yeah, it. Right. Um, tomorrow's going to be in the 40s, okay. which is interesting. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, the talent pool in Minneapolis uh, uh, has been great with uh, file system companies that came out of there. Uh, Silicon Graphics de developed their file system. Sun had a file system. Uh, companies like Storage Tech, uh, Network Systems. Wasn't uh, Cray out of there too? Was Cray it? was yeah. out of the area, so it's been a great, great talent pool and it's really helped uh, the Dell team grow. We've grown uh, significantly in the Minnesota area and uh, we look forward to continuing to growing even further. Excellent. Um, all right, so, so put on your I don't know, break out the telescope or maybe just the binoculars. What, is, what do you see for the future of of storage and the future of Dell storage? From a um, Dell storage perspective, we've uh, recently brought in quite a bit of um, outside IP um, to the Dell mix, and our, our goal over the next few years is to bring those together. Um, the customer problems really haven't changed. Um, they're dealing with data growth and complexity, and as their business grows, and um, actually, if anything, what's changed is their environments are more cost constrained. They have fewer IT resources. They need something simpler, uh, more scalable, more automatic, something that's more flexible and dynamic that they can work with that solves all their needs. They don't want uh, vendor A storage to do one solution, vendor B, uh, vendor C, etc. They want something that spans all their problems and that, that's where we can help at Dell by bringing in the technology that we've already acquired integrating it, continuing to evolve. Um, we'll succeed at Dell when we can do that successfully, and that's part of our plan. How do you approach the, the cloud? What's your, what's your bumper sticker or angle on the cloud? Cloud is real. Cloud is absolutely real. A couple years ago, if I went to a uh, storage conference, I would have been uh, skeptical of the cloud. I thought just 
you know, it, it's just another name for a, uh, a network. And, um, but it's true, customers are, like I said a moment ago, customers are looking to simplify. And if the cloud helps them offload storage or offload resources, then it's, uh, then it's a great way to do that. Um, Dell is part of that. Dell has a number of different ways that we help our customers with the cloud. Uh, we have uh, data centers in Iraq that have been part of our uh, existing programs. Uh, Dell also has... Um, That's in a rack. Yes, Correct. in a rack. Not in, in a not, the Middle East. Not a country, <laughs> no. To say, new outsourcing we're, we're, trend, you heard it here first on theCUBE. We're, we're not allowed <laughs> to sell there, as far as I can tell. We'd have to cut this off if I was. The other kind of in a rack, not... Anyway, you get the Got idea, yeah. you get the idea. <laughs> but it is uh, completely together in a system. How about that? It's good. Well, no. let's not use the rack word. Okay. But anyway, um, that is part of our solution. Uh, we also have uh, channel partners that are uh, trained on the cloud. Uh, we have other solutions to uh, archive and to pro provide data to the cloud, a variety of resources. So the cloud is real and it will continue to grow. So what is the storage for the cloud? I mean, because uh, you, you see, Block storage in the cloud, there's file storage in the cloud, there's object in the storage in the cloud, you guys have all of the above? So um, the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, Dell has storage for the cloud. Uh, different environments are looking for different ways to implement that together. Um, some of them will want flash, object, block, file, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we have solutions across the full portfolio. So again, the cloud is almost a, um, a euphemism for I want easier to manage, easier to scale, lower cost storage. And that, that's what the cloud's all about. We were talking about Unified before, um, <clears throat> and you mentioned some, you know, some futures around you know, the, 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 the Exanet coming in and sure. you know, bringing that unifying capability. Do you see Object as being part of that, or is Object so different that it sort of be, needs to be treated differently? Uh, the use cases for Object are slightly different. Um, customers looking for a slightly different type of application, a little bit outside the normal block or file, like you Archiving said. Archiving, maybe. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, Dell's had a number of products for uh, object. We have a platform in that area, and uh, it's been very, very popular. We made some significant announcements uh, six months ago with that platform where we included um, compression and dedupe from the Ocarina technology. Yeah. Some great uh, software partners that are in that area. So yes, that, that applies as well. All right, any last, we'll give you the last word. Anything else you want to leave us with here at Dell Storage Forum? You guys got a lot of action going on this week. You just gave a super se double secret presentation. Triple secret. Triple and we, secret. And we talked about the Middle East all together. <laughs> uh -huh. Is there a connection? Uh, <laughs> none that I'm aware of. <laughs> so um, I, I guess to wrap it up by saying the um, um, because you asked a lot about uh, uh, directional questions in the past relative to the future. Being an event like this is really quite different. Um, the first event like this, it used to be called C Drive, where we had uh, maybe 30, 40 partners there, not, uh, total people, not number of partners each with multiple people. So if you look at that change over the last uh, five, six years, the change has been quite dynamic and pretty significant. To see an event uh, this large is uh, pretty exciting as well. And it, it shows what's going on in the storage space. If you're a vendor, which we are, that can bring in technologies that customers want, that it's affordable, that it's easy to use, that helps them solve their business problems, those vendors will succeed. And uh, when they succeed, you get great events like this and uh, opportunities to talk uh, live uh, like this. It's great. Awesome. Well. Bob, thanks for coming on. Um, we couldn't be here without the generous support of Dell, and uh, really appreciate you guys having us here. Glad and to glad to be part of it. And of course, our other sponsor, Legal Seafood. I don't know if you've uh, been to Legal. You not yet, go, but I will now. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. right? There's a new new Legal Seafood Let's just go. across the way. Let's go. Let's uh, go. Yeah, Legal Harborside, three yeah. floors, mm. quite amazing. Yeah, Father's Day's coming up. I'll come you know, back. Day, so yeah. shop.legal.com. They, they, they do take it. They do uh, delivery now for to, over the yeah. internet. They yeah. the, the gift bags. So so, so, so Boston send, classic. So quick send a note to uh, my family in Minnesota. You know they they could send a gift certificate while I'm here, and I could get some too. There you go. Or you could bring lobsters could, back. Could, could we take care of that? <laughs> lobsters at uh, Jr. Hook. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. You I go brought there it back too, live. Yeah. Those are fun. <laughs> Should try legals. Sounds good. All right. Uh, okay. Keep it right there, Bob. Thanks very much for coming on. Absolutely, really guys. Pleasure. Really it's good. Great. Thanks. Uh, update. Congratulations on all the progress that you guys are making. Thank you. All right. This is the cube. Keep it right there. We'll be back with more from Dell Storage Forum live from Boston. <laughs>